If you're a beginner or even an intermediate who's been racing Hyperland for some time, but with not much to show for it, not with a setup that you're actually fully proud of just yet, there's most likely a huge myth that you still believe in. It takes a long time and a lot of skill in order to race Hyperland. That's the myth. I've been racing Hyperland for just about four years and can't express the sheer vigor with which I want to grab you by the shoulders and say that it couldn't be farther from the truth. See, when I first got started racing, my BSPWM looked a little something like this right here. So if I were to show you what it looks like, okay, it was tomorrow night, X, this one right here. This is what it looks like. It's using Alacrity for the terminal over here, Polybar for the status bar, Pycom for the compositor because X window managers didn't come with one and more. I eventually came across Hyperland and made a setup that looked a little more like this. Not this one, but actually this. This setup is made with a Grovebox theme, and because I hadn't quite figured out how to make icons work inside of status bars, I was still using text in order to represent the different aspects of the bar itself, like battery, volume, backlight, the brightness basically, along with network and the actual time. Of course, it would be pretty weird if I just put time, colon, and then the time, so I just have the time over here. And this is what the base wallpaper looks like. Pretty nice, right? Fast forward and we have an Everforest themed setup right here. So this is light mode and here too I'm using the Al Alacrity terminal finally switched away to a different fetch tool. This one's niche. This is the niche era of my fetch tools. Looks pretty nice. And also I seem to have shifted towards a more dark like style for the bar as well as going with something minimal for the workspace indicator as well. So this was the point when I'd finally figured out how to make icons work and so I started using them pretty much everywhere even for the time, even though that does not need to be said. But anyway, this is what my setup looks like. I've even made a video showcasing this exact setup in the past before. Fast forward again, and now it's one with a vaporwave aesthetic, as you can see here. So this wallpaper was something that I actually found on the r slash Unix porn subreddit, and if you've been on that subreddit before, then you will know that it is a treasure trove of just really good looking setups as well as wallpapers, but it's actually pretty easy to get lost in that and start comparing yourself to others. So I would warn you to look at it, but only in as a source for inspiration and not for a source of comparison, because comparison not only leaves you feeling dissatisfied if in case you end up feeling inferior, you also tend to feel better than you actually are if you compare yourself to setups that look worse. Both outcomes are not exactly the most favorable for you, so I'd suggest always going on there with a conscious mind, not just going there and comparing yourself to every single race that you see. So this is what, uh, as you can see, I'm using over here. So as for the actual theming setup, this is where I'd started to get a bit more into theming instead of using static themes like the one in Grovebox here. This is using Pywall. So if I switched my wallpaper and typed in a little command, what it would do is it would get my colors from the wallpaper it would extract whatever colors my wallpaper had and used those colors in order to theme the rest of the setup with for, for Waybar, for the terminal, as well as whatever other programs that I themed, like including Spotify, for example. This is Spotify themed using Spicetify. Fast forward some more, skip a couple of boring setups, and this is what my current setup looks like. Fully furnished with custom theme switchers, as you can see from this notification, as well as this entire theme switching mechanism. This works for GTK apps, for terminals, for basically every app that you can think of, including text editors and code editors and all of that fun stuff. So I can switch the theme to something like Everforest, and that would also make a difference, as you can see here. And if I wanted to, I have also implemented a wallpaper switcher. So if I wanted to get a different wallpaper, all I'd have to do was just pick one, and it would appear in front of me with this beautiful, slick animation. Not just that, but there's also a lot more features that were just lacking in the previous setups. Notifications like these OSDs, for example, what we call on-screen displays, especially for volume and brightness. And not just that, but notification daemons, like this one, basically notification panels as well. This is something that is a new addition in my current setup with this one over here. There's a tray in Waybar. There's also different Waybar layouts. So there's one for ultra minimal if I wanted to choose this. There's also subtle, which is quite minimal. It looks professional as well. There's alchemy if in case I wanted a monospaced font and a couple different ones as well. And even a horizontal dark like one if I was feeling a little bit reminiscent of the old days. So if I wanted to, I can just switch back to velvet line and this is going to be my main bot. So let's just actually close this. Yeah, yes, we'll quit that. There you go, perfect. 
Now, as you just witnessed, the setups that I made initially looked boring as hell. There was barely any flavor to them, and they were basically a wallpaper with matching colors for the three apps that I used. Eventually, evolution happened, and now this is the setup that I use, complete with all of the different little bells and whistles that I have just mentioned. The time I made each setup is super spread out because I had other stuff to do, but actually sitting down and making each setup from this one to this one to this one actually took barely any time at all. And not just that, but as I just showed you, there was a point where my setups were actually starting to look pretty good without me needing to learn too many tools. And that was right about here, where the Waybar config is still simple enough along with all of the rest of the apps that I'm using like this terminal, for example, along with VS Codium and the other stuff that I'd themed back then. If in case you want to get to know what this exact theme looked like for all of the different apps that I've made a video on that previously, so you can check that one out. So yeah, this was the point where my setup actually started to look pretty good without me needing to learn too many new tools at all. So what I want to tell you with this is, if I could make setups like the ones that you just saw in barely any time and with pretty much bare minimum skill, then you can too. I showed you exactly where I started, and it's not exactly impressive, but if I was able to do it, then surely you can too. And in case you needed a tutorial that helps you out with making setups like my current one right here, along with bundling over four years of knowledge into a couple of hours, you can check out the program, which is the first link in the description. I detail the exact step-by-step -step process of click this button, write this line here, this is why stuff works, this is how you change it, so on and so forth, in order to help you make a setup like this one on your own, and I'll just copy somebody else's dot files and then hope that they never break, which they always do. And if I were to show you one of the modules in detail, like this theme switchers module, for example, which covers the exact ins and outs of this theme switching system, if you wanted to give me a pre, if you wanted me to give you a preview of that, that would be something like a color schemes module, or rather folder, which is where all of the folders and config files required to make this work actually exist. So in here, we have a bunch of different folders that correspond to different tools that we're going to be using. And inside of those are going to be config files, which actually contain the colors in order to make this entire thing work. The entire system, which I explained to you inside of this module right here. So this is the part where the theme switching script is explained. And here we're just getting started out with making this entire thing from scratch. The wallpaper is a bit different because we were dealing with Matugen based theme switching, which is basically picking the colors from your wallpaper and then using that. But eventually, as we're making the transition to custom themes, that too is handled very gracefully, as you can see in the next couple of minutes. So if you want to learn how to make a setup like this one, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. And that was one I wanted to show you first. If I could do it, then you could too. Now, the second is segued to beautifully from the previous section we were just on regarding tutorials. The myth of Hyperland being hard is just a myth if you can find tutorials and documentation that accurately explain whatever you're looking for. This was something I personally struggled with back in the day. All the docs that we had back then, especially for Hyperland, were very minimal. Now, as for other apps like Waybar, all that was there was basically a tutorial explaining the basics of it on YouTube, not how to make it look pretty. We don't even need to mention tutorials for other tools like WLogout and HyperSunset and all those other tools because one, they didn't exist at the time. And secondly, even if they did exist, there was no way in hell anybody would have gone and made a tutorial for them because they were so niche. Times have changed now, however. The Hyperland wiki is more full-fledged than it ever has been, with updates being made literally almost every single day. Weibo's wiki has a dedicated Hyperland section as well, with more and more people covering topics that you're going to need to when you're racing Hyperland on YouTube as well, including myself. So with documentation and tutorials no longer being an issue, Hyperland really is very easy to rice and doesn't take too long at all and isn't very demanding of skill either. All you really need to do is be good at following instructions and understanding how every part links with each other and you're set. Now, the last and final thing I want to tell you is short and sweet. You must instill in yourself the unwavering desire to verify every claim that you hear that is of concern to you. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, before you listen to another person's opinion or give it any sort of credence, okay, any sort of significance in your mind, verify whether what that person is saying is actually true or not. This is going to save you from picking up many a limiting belief like the one that we just started out with, like the myth that I explained at the start of the video, that Hyperland is hard and then it takes too long to rise and then people who were just born with the skill and talent of art and whatnot are only capable of doing it and nobody else. That's obviously the most false thing ever. As you can see, I started out with this. It doesn't look too bad, but it looks pretty plain compared to what you have right here, compared to all the different features I've been able to implement after doing this for some time. 
As for the limiting belief I mentioned earlier, today's myth we discussed is nothing but exactly that. That's it. So all it took to get rid of it for you, if it did, was giving you a bunch of reasons as to why it's false and basically showing you the light. If your eyes were covered by a blindfold and you were forced to see pitch black all the time, all I did was just take your blindfold off. And if that helped and you want more step-by-step -step content that you can just start watching right now instead of spending days just finding good tutorials instead of doing anything, and you also want to make theme switchers and everything else that I showed you as soon as possible without using others dot files, you can go ahead and click the first link in the description. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising. Mwah.